Well, tonight we we'll talk to the founders of the Millionaire Underdog Club. They created a, an exclusive club for successful business owners in South Africa. Now, they created it such that business people can network, share skills amongst one another, empower each other, and of course, uh, grow each other's, each other's businesses. This is a new it thing in the world of business. And of course, it was started by the world's number one wealth coach, Mr. JT Fox. The results of this program are said to be astonishing. We're going to be talking about the power of networking, how to get more money for your business, and of course, how to grow your company, your business, your brand, etc. Please help me welcome into studio today, Francois Joubet and Mickey, is it Mickey Ruthman or Mickey Rothman? <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks for having us. So I'm going to start with Mickey. This, what is the Millionaire Underdog Club? Well, Sabu, the Millionaire Underdog Club was started, as you said, by JT Fox, the world's number one uh, wealth coach. And it is a global network where we aim to bring business owners together, uh, startup businesses, every way through to your investors as well. We want them to connect with each other and to do business together. So we want to try and help elevate entrepreneurs from the startups all the way through to your investors who have already made it big. Okay, and how do um, business owners benefit by joining the Underdog Club? Well, so, we say, so it is. So let me say, profit the Millionaire Underdog Club. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To the benefit that owners get from that is, is that they won't just network with our local members in Kauteng or even in South Africa. We have clubs globally. We club, have a club in the UK, we have clubs in Sweden, in Norway, in Singapore, all over the world. And our vision is to have 150 clubs by the end of this year worldwide where our members will connect to our global members and if you have a service or a product that you want to play global or you want to expand your business internationally, our club will give you a very effective and efficient uh, way to do that. Wow, that's really awesome. And, and you guys, are, are you guys business owners yourselves or have you owned a business before? Yes, I am a serial entrepreneur myself. Okay. Uh, I own three businesses uh, fr from a pre-primary school all the way to an accounting practice. Um, I've, I'm a qualified CA as well. I've been in the corporate world for more than 10 years and decided no, that's not for me and uh, resigned and started my own thing. And my passion is, is to help entrepreneurs and to help business own, owners to elevate their business. And I think another benefit of our club is they say that your net worth equals your network. So we've seen on our members where their network has just exploded and the deals that they have done is just amazing. Mickey, how do I join your club? I mean, I own a beverages company, I want to join your club. All right, the first thing you can do is you can always come and see it for yourself first before you join. Uh, Non-members can come to the club once off to see what it's all about. Otherwise, what you can do is to go onto our Facebook page. The link is there for you to join. You can register either for one of the events there or you can directly contact us to speak to us about joining as a member. All right, and how, we, how do we get in touch with you guys? Uh, our email address is Club at millionaireunderdogclubs.com Say that again please. It's joberclub at millionaireunderdogclubs.com And what are some of the um, successful results you guys have had with, um, in, in, in regards to helping young or small uh, businesses? Well we actually had another event last night where, uh, where our members came together as well as non-members and we had quite a lot of feedback and testimonials that came through from especially business owners that were looking to join in joint ventures with bigger owners or even suppliers. Because what we encourage people to do is when you're a startup business, uh, don't wait until you are actually at a point where you can, you, you've got the money or you've got what you need to grow, is join partnerships. Join yeah. partnerships to, to do trade exchanges yeah. because all businesses are starting at a, at a certain level. So we've had quite a lot of feedback from our members saying that they have done joint ventures with other members or they met somebody on the night that mm. is the specific person that they need. Yes. And we love to say it takes one person, one opportunity and one chance for, for your business to grow. And then t tell me here, you know I interact with a lot of entrepreneurs all the time. I interview entrepreneurs on the radio side, on the television side, I've been an entre entrepreneur for the longest time myself. And there's key things that most entrepreneurs um, face as a challenge, especially young young entrepreneurs. What would you say, uh, based on your interaction with a lot of these entrepreneurs, has been the one biggest challenge of um, African young entrepreneurs? The one biggest challenge that we that our members uh, say that they face is really to to get that right connection. Um, they they spend a lot of time to find the right connection to make that um, that, that deal. And with us at the Millionaire Underdog Club, we've got various and, and diverse people and businesses. So 
So it makes it very easy for them to interact with them and to make that, that connection. We're actually busy uh, developing a Tinder-like app um, where all our members' profiles will be on this app. Our members will be able to scroll through the, the application. If they, they like something, they can match it and then go and meet uh, later on and connect that way. And it will also be location-based. So whether you're sitting at a coffee shop or you're sitting at the airport lounge, you can switch that on um, and see all the other members wow. in your surrounding area. Yeah. So you'll be connected all the time. In your community. Mm -hmm. And based on your experiences and you know the relationship between um, the private sector and the government, do you think there's, more, there's enough opportunities to help entrepreneurs? Is government driving entrepreneurship enough? Is the private sector just leaving it to government? <laughs> I think I think everyone in South Africa, uh, private sector and government-wise, is waking up to the fact that the future of our country is entrepreneurs. And I think they are doing quite a lot from a private sector side and government side to drive that. And most definitely, I mean, South Africa is a country that is big and there's so much opportunity here. And if you just look around you, there is always an opportunity to start another business. And I think business owners know that we also contribute to employment in this country. So I think we as entrepreneurs have a very big uh, responsibility to actually yeah. help grow other entrepreneurs because it does grow the economy at the end of the day as well. What has been the biggest teacher in your experience in business? I would say definitely, you know, when you start out, you think you know it all. Um, my biggest step that I had to take was to let go of the reins. Uh, start getting an A-team in place that can actually support me because you as entrepreneur, when you start on your own, you do everything yourself. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and that just doesn't work, you burn yourself out. So oh, yeah. my biggest lesson has been to really just find A-players and let go. Train them up and, and trust in them and believe in them to be able to do what they need to do as well. You know, we're discussing entrepreneurship with uh, entrepreneurs who are smart enough to have collaborated with an international movement that they've created that helps young entrepreneurs and it's called the Millionaire Underdog Club. And I love when you guys talk about the global language. Do you think a lot of entrepreneurs or do you have enough entrepreneurs who think that big to go global? I think a lot of entrepreneurs are scared in the beginning because they look at their product or their service or whatever their business idea is and they're not sure firstly how to monetize it, let alone how to take it international. And I think that is what the club supports as well is we teach entrepreneurs, we learn together. So we make sure that we, we always have a speaker that is bringing relevant content to entrepreneurs. And for instance, our first speaker that we had at the club came to, he was from Sweden, and he came to speak to the South African club members to actually help them to grow their businesses overseas, to find investors overseas. Mm. Because that is key, is finding out how to do it. And what about if um, I'm in Kenya, I'm in Nigeria, I'd love to join a club, am I welcome? Or is it just for South Africans? At this point in time, we only have a club in South Africa, but as I mentioned, we, our vision is to have 150 clubs worldwide. Yeah. So we are not excluding the Africa continent, um, and our vision is really to, to get there in there as well, start a club there, because what we found as well is, and you've asked, are there enough business globally and are we thinking globally, is that you need to start local, but think global. Mm. And if you can connect with some of our members that is international and you offer a marketing services or a branding services, software development or any other service or product that you have, and you can connect with them and you can start earning dollars and pounds and euros, that's pretty good. And for them, it's again much easier and cheaper to pay in South African rands than in their own mm. currencies. And what is your take on female entrepreneurs? Are we getting enough numbers or there's just more males all the time? You know what? I think and I'll ask you the same question. I'll come to you just now, Mickey. I think I, I, I'm seeing this and I think there's, there's a movement and a revolution taking place of more female entrepreneurs uh, getting on board and starting up. Um, there's a lot of female entrepreneurs like Mickey that are inspiring other female entrepreneurs and females to start their own thing because I think based on our history that it, it, it's, it's difficult for them. But um, with people like Mickey and, and, and all her other people that are encouraging them, they need to do that. But they also need our males as well to support them and to guide them as well. And we can learn a lot from them as well. Um, I'm, I'm certainly, I'm doing, and, and with my business partner, I'm learning a lot from the, from the female entrepreneurs. Are there any other young Mickeys out there? There's plenty. I meet plenty of ladies that have so much potential and with the right guidance and the right coaching, most definitely. I see a lot happening in South Africa specifically for women and globally as well. Mm. Definitely. And then in your club, do you have good numbers, female entrepreneurs? We do. We've got a very good split between ladies and gents. 
And I think the, the ladies have sort of woken up to the fact that we can be in business, but we don't have to be a man to be in business. It's, it's quite something that I'm passionate about is what uh, Francois said as well is women play a very unique role in business. We bring a different aspect to business mm. than men do, but we definitely need the men as well. Yeah. You know, we, we've got 40 emotions, they've got four. <laughs> so, um, you know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you, you need our 40 emotions in business, but... Not sometimes, we need you guys all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I, I think women are finding their unique place in business specifically and our, our unique purpose, bringing the, the softness to business as well. Mm, do you think, when it comes to challenges, do you think uh, most of the challenges that are faced by male entrepreneurs are similar to female entrepreneurs or it's not a gender issue, it depends on what business you're in? I don't think it's a gender issue, but there are definite issues that I think most females face that the gents might not face. Mm. Uh, for because instance, a lot of people start to come in there. A lot of people say females face more challenges than men do. Mm -hmm. Because in the in the in the business um, um, uh, environment, you find other businessmen who want to take advantage of younger, um, um, growing female entrepreneurs because they look good mm -hmm. and, and they start having. You you've got issues like men wanting to meet in the evenings, for instance, mm -hmm. and the poor lady is probably engaged or she's married or she's not even interested in a, in that type of relationship. She just needs help or she needs mentorship or she needs a contract or she just needs a meeting. And those types of challenges, as far as females and males are concerned. Most definitely, I think ladies deal with it quite often, but I have heard of some of the gents that deal with it as well in business, funny enough. But that should not stop anyone from going into business. Yeah. If anything, if you can find a coach that can guide you, I mean, that's somebody you can phone to just sort of say, this is the situation, I mean, how do I handle it? Yeah. And I think the longer you're in business, you kind of learn how to deal with those kinds of things as well. And, and Francois, I find that a lot of young entrepreneurs today, especially nowadays, they want it now, which is a good thing to want it now, guys. I also want it now, but I think a lot of us, we miss understanding that it's actually a marathon, not a race. And a lot of the guys that have plugged into uh, the Millionaire Underdog Club, how, how does how does your club help them understand the journey of entrepreneurship that it takes time? Mm. It's it's hundred percent right that you say, and I think I was there in that position as well. Um, I wanted it, I wanted it now, but my business coach taught me that that life is on a gradient scale, and you have to go through the processes of of, of getting there. Um, and I always compare it to to a baby. Baby don't just get born and walk; they need to get the stability, then crawl, then walk, and then run after it. So what we do in the club is specifically we look at speakers that can add value to our members, that can take them through this journey on, on, on different kind of things. Um, some will be a, a mindset uh, speaker that we get, so that you get your mindset right. Other speakers that we get in will have practical examples on how to do that. Um, if you are struggling with a particular aspect in your business, for instance, hiring the right personnel. Yeah, yeah. Um, they will come in and speak to our members. And our members, which is excellent, the speaker don't just come in, speak to everyone and then leave. He's got a private session after his talk to our mem members exclusively, where they have a Q&A session where they can ask him specific questions and he answers that. My last question, them. quickly in 30 seconds. Now, I'm a social entrepreneur and I'm passionate about empowerment. How do you help your members build purposeful businesses rather than just chasing profits? Purposeful businesses? Yeah. I would say start with your why. Find your why, find your passion, find that thing that switches you on in the morning and makes you feel this is what I need to do. Because when you're chasing your why, the money will come by itself. Mm -hmm. Francois? Yes, I want to add to that is don't do it for the money. Do it to add value to other people. The more value you add to other people, money will take care of itself. If you take care of your customers, your customers will take care of your profits. I'm already seeing that young entrepreneur <laughs> sitting at home watching, what do you mean I shouldn't do it for the money? <laughs> isn't it called business? Isn't it about money? <laughs> yes, it is about money, but if it's about purpose, you connect with people forever because you're impacting their lives and they see more reason why they should support your business other than the next year down the street. So uh, keep pushing those businesses. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you thank for having you. us. Wishing Thank you guys you well with um, your entrepreneurship journey. Many thanks to Francois Joubet and uh, Mickey Ruthman, the founders of the Millionaire Underdog Club.